There's a short quote out there that goes like this. Home is the sweetest word there is. It's by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And, uh, we'll talk more about her later. To own a home is a quintessential step towards the American dream. Not just for the purpose of having a place to stay, but building a family, putting in roots, and most importantly, building wealth. The only problem with that is, it's not always done equitably across all people. Take, for instance, the story of Miles Ricard III. He's a software engineer out of a suburb in Atlanta. He was married to a doctor. And he had an above 800 credit score, meaning he could buy the earth. Well, technically, it's like the one of the highest in the top 5% of credit scores in the United States. The brother is killing it. Well, he tried to get his home refinanced, but unfortunately, he was financed with Wells Fargo. The loan officer took one look at Ricard's credit score and said, hey, with this credit score, we'll probably put you on a fast track appraisal. To Ricard's dismay, about a week later, things started to change. He got a call back where they wanted more information. Then more information. Then they told him that his rate would be much higher than he thought. He was thinking in the neighborhood of two. They were thinking more like 4.5. See, the thing about Ricard's home is that it's a nice four-bedroom colonial, but it's in a black neighborhood. He was told by the loan officer, perhaps the area is not eligible for the rapid fast-track appraisal. And eventually, Wells Fargo rejected his offer altogether. Can you imagine that, an 800 credit score, and you can't get your home refinanced at a time when most Americans are getting their homes refinanced? Wells Fargo is the number one rejector of black homeowners. No one else even comes close. According to the Bloomberg report, approval rates for whites was around 72%, Asians 63%, Hispanics 52%, and blacks did last at 47 In fact, Blacks with the highest credit scores. Their approval rates were just beneath whites with their lowest credit scores. Other lending institutions were far better than Wells Fargo. Among all major lenders, Wells Fargo had the biggest disparity between black and white homeowners. The data also shows that Wells Fargo was so bad, 27% of black homeowners who put in applications with Wells Fargo withdrew them. I wonder if they got their money back. Things with Wells Fargo haven't changed one bit. In fact, a new class action lawsuit was just filed on Friday, right in San Francisco, alleging the company is engaging in a new, updated, modernized version of redlining. It discriminates against black homeowners who try to refinance their homes for lower interest rates. The lawsuit alleges, in many cases, that not only did they deny refinancing, but they pushed black homeowners into foreclosure. Wells Fargo has denied the American dream to black applicants. When this news report came out, U.S. Senate Banking Committee Chair Sherrod Brown and Ohio Democrat and other Democratic senators called for regulators to investigate Wells Fargo. According to the complaint, Wells Fargo was more likely to approve white homeowners whose income was zero to 63,000 before it would approve black homeowners whose annual income was upwards of 120,000 to 160,000 annually. You can't buy your way out of discrimination. Black applicants were also more subjected to delays, feigned mistakes, and other obstacles, leading many black Americans to withdraw their request for refinancing, leading others to wait indefinitely while Wells Fargo refuses to act upon their applications. It's all in the complaint. The suit alleges violations of federal fair credit and housing laws, the U.S. and California civil rights statutes, as well as California's unfair competition law. Wells Fargo says they're working feverishly with black homeowners trying to come up with different ways to be more creative in order to get black homeowners approved. Who needs to be creative? Just do what other banking institutions do. Hire some other people. 
change your algorithms. Stop being racist. So what happened with Mr. Ricard, right? We'll go with the good news first. He went with another lending institution and he was able to refinance his home. Him and his wife moved into a predominantly white neighborhood with a bigger home, better house, and his rate almost a point and a half less than what uh, Wells Fargo was going to charge him. So things worked out in that way, you know? Uh, the bad news is the neighborhood he moved into was predominantly white. And the same day he moved into his new home with his lower interest rate, they called the cops on him. Not a lot of blacks in the neighborhood. True story. I almost forgot. Remember that quote from Lord Ingalls Wilder? Home is the sweetest word there is. But Laura Ingle Wilder was an author. She wrote Little House on the Prairie. It was so popular, it became a show called Little House on the Prairie. That's it, Little House on the Prairie. You may remember not watching it when you were a kid. Laura Ingalls Wilder turned out to be a flaming racist. Somehow they kind of missed that part when they started handing out the Laura Ingalls Award. Turns out Laura Ingalls is just as racist as Wells Fargo. Home sweet home. Discrimination in America is as American as apple pie. We shouldn't be surprised at all with a country that's with a history of redlining that's alive and well in America to this day. In fact, it didn't stop. Some just got better at camouflaging it. It's the algorithm. Become a member of the Tim Black Wolfpack by going to jointimblack.com. Do that today only for $5, and we'll keep the stories coming. Wolfpack.